are my favorite bit going through the comments. No, 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 you cannot joke about that. Yeah, that's not funny. This series is all about going and speaking to different men and listening to what they have to say. Part of the listening is engaging with some of the comments. Some of the comments are a little bit tapped. If you have not watched the first series, there is a video where I answer some recurring questions, including why is a woman covering this? Why does her accent change all the time? Adam, on my life, if you put the Masvidal clip in this. I definitely get that, but I'm focusing on men. <laughs> oh my gosh, I watched it back. I was like, why am I speaking with a Mexican accent? He's Cuban as well. Like it was, because we started speaking in Spanish, that's why. I've been doing this since I was little. I can't, sorry. It's just, that's who I am. Okay. A lot of people on the UFC video said that we didn't speak to women. Weird that they didn't interview any female MMA fighters. The UFC is one of the few sports organizations where men and women share the same stage and are promoted alongside each other. Ooh, there's a woman. And I understand that and appreciate that. But this is a series on masculinity. There were 12 different fights up on, on the list and only one of them involved women. So I was like, obviously there are more guys who are fighting and that's no disrespect to the women. I understand that there's a lot of things said about, you know, them earning fair money compared to other sports. I get it, but this series is about masculinity and it was mostly men there. I also did mention that in one of the clips that we recorded. Obviously there are female fighters as well and there are female fans, but it is dominated predominantly by men. Uh, so that's why the interest is here in that. Uh, I don't want to kind of erase the existence of female fighters or anything, um, but I'm here to focus predominantly on masculinity. And we didn't use it in the end because there's just a limit to how much we could put in the video. I think we're running out of time. I have a final question about- Time is infinite. Uh, unfortunately, we <laughs> have- <laughs> You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If you go and you speak to women, they'll be like, why did you speak to a woman? Why is a woman doing this? And if you don't speak to women, they'll be like, why didn't you speak to women? It's like, oh my God, I'm not gonna make everyone happy. Richie Rossin says she should get some bigger earrings. I think that's a joke, but I will try. If I could get bigger ones, I would. Alex Gummer, wait, so was this supposed to come to a conclusion? Michael says she never unpacks the information to answer the question herself. All right, my brothers. There isn't a concrete answer. It's an exploration of something that's really complex, right? Lots of people say different things. I think Dan Hardy, gave a really good answer. Some of us have got a bit more wild animal than others, and that wild animal needs to manifest in some ways. I'm not an expert on this. The people I speak to provide a very kind of comprehensive, wide-ranging response to quite a broad question. I have been thinking, racking my brains to try and work out how to wrap this up, what my conclusions are. I sat down for like a good half an hour talking about this, and then I just thought, well, you're, you, you, you're smart enough to make your own opinions. Oh my God, it's taken ages. But if you want to see me speak at length, I mean, I could upload the whole half an hour video. You could just watch me speak for half an hour about... There you go. <laughs> Adam said, no, sorry, guys. Why is the USC so popular with men? I mean, the title riled people. I'm so sorry, guys. I feel like I triggered people with this headline. <sighs> there were some responses like, why are leggings so popular with women? Why is keeping up with the Kardashians so popular with women? Why is pregnancy so popular with women? I think it'd be interesting. Why is keeping up with the Kardashians so popular with women? I feel like you could say a lot about society and where we're at at the moment, social media, our culture. If a guy wants to make that video, I will 100% watch it. Shout me when it's done, all right? I'll share it on Twitter. Circumcision was uh, an interesting, controversial space to go into. If you was another man and you asked me this, I'd have looked at you like, what the fuck? <laughs> How long have you guys known each other? How long? Ten, Ten years. Ten yeah. years, and you've never spoken about this? Never. Never talked about each other's penises either. <laughs> no. On all these episodes, I am not trying to come in and tell men what to do. Like, who is it for me to tell a guy what, what? If he's saying to me, I don't feel that I've been, um, I've been mutilated, I don't feel this, I don't feel this. Who am I as a woman to go and say to a guy, well, you know what you are? No, like that, that's the whole reason I'm not taking a hard stance on this because I'm not going to go to any guy and tell them you shouldn't have had this done to you if they're happy with it or, you know, you should have this done to you if you haven't had it. I'm not here to argue with people. I'm here to 
to basically understand where they are coming from because I feel like that's missing a lot. You are sadist, criminal. Shut up, you don't even you, have a dick. You're torturing little children. Oh, defensive. fuck you. Yes. You know what? If I wasn't a lady, I would deck you yeah, right Yeah, I would now. circumcise you if I could. There are other places and other videos that you can go to to find people arguing about things. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to find those things elsewhere. Give me, give me my phone. Get, get my phone. You know, some of the DMs I've got, the response I've got, it was like a response video um, that seemed really, really annoyed with Ellie. We need to have a conversation about anti-Semitism and the anti-activist movement. His willingness to throw this movement and the children we are trying to protect under the bus is evidence of his dual loyalty. The anti-activist world, I didn't say, was all on the alt-right, but there were corners of it where clearly there were issues. Some of the comments, I was like, can you just allow me to go through this as a person that doesn't know much about this from a community where it's practiced and I've worked in like an FGM campaign. If you can't even allow me to have this journey and come and form my own opinions, you're really not gonna do much for your own cause. Like you're just gonna turn people off from it and you just make it sound like something we can't talk about. Oh my days. I've ever seen anyone cut their own hair before. I've been cutting my hair since 14 years old. I was my first client. I really enjoyed speaking to Mark and the guys in this barbershop and it was so chill and I feel like one of the best things about this series is that I've met such amazing guys across one and two. The third episode just dealt with so many things that I just feel are important. I used to ask her like, why, you know, why is he like this and why can't I get free to him? She's like, his dad didn't show him any any love or anything, so he's the same. And I'm like, is that an excuse though to not try? I think that there was a lot to connect with here about dads and religion and all of that stuff. Corruption says, this has to be the best episode so far on the subject of toxic masculinity and that conversation. Big ups to Iman as well, mad amount of respect for her doing these interviews. Interesting, it was Mark that brought up toxic masculinity and this was the first time it got covered because I haven't wanted to talk about that. Everybody just talks so much about this toxic masculinity. So I don't think anybody fully even knows what masculinity is anymore or anybody, I think most people, in front of a camera anyway, are scared to talk about. So someone says, that is fabulous. The whole thing about Mark's shop, the men who go there, their conversation, very sweet and real. My faith is my foundation. I don't always get it right, but that's my foundation. I think so too. Please go watch this video. I really like this one. I think it's, there's just something about it. Are you actually gonna eat that pizza? Poor guy didn't get to eat his pizza. He didn't really want the pizza. It was more about the conversation, but I'm glad you're so concerned for Mark's wellbeing. Yeah, it's fine. Good. There is so much positivity in here. I tried to engage a little bit with the, um, the criticisms because I feel like it's good to answer those questions, but anything where someone feels like they got something positive out of it, I'm so happy. The Men in the Media episode, Reed says, the harsh criticism of advertising focused towards women and the lack of criticism towards male advertising felt like an implicit statement that it was okay for men to be advertised in this way. It definitely shaped body self-consciousness that I still feel today. Thank you for covering this, it means a lot to me. Somebody said, it's all so terribly confusing. Shouldn't I strive to be strong and successful? Isn't shame just part of self-improvement? Nothing makes sense anymore. See, I find that really interesting because that does also feed into like, you know, the Peterson stuff about bettering yourself and being a better version of yourself. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? John Peterson, Joe Rogan, you know, changing the way men look at themselves today. How can you be the best version of yourself whilst also being kind to yourself and actually liking yourself? <laughs> actually, Gwyneth Paltrow in her, in her thing on, on Netflix. Tell me you didn't just say that. She talks about like self-optimization. We're here one time, one life. How can we really milk the shit out of this? <laughs> and I feel like we are all creatures that need to consistently progress and feel like we're making ourselves better as we get older, because otherwise, what's the point? Adverts and the way society constructs success is very, very rigid. It's not to say that just because you want to break out of that very fixed box that you want to be obese and like lazy and unsuccessful. It's like about kind of diversifying that, right? It's about, you know, if you're short, that isn't the image that is in, in you know, the adverts that we see. 
and that's not something you can change by going to the gym or dieting. So then how do you deal with that? And it's about having, you know, different people and breaking down the traditional adverts. Beauty is skin deep. It's underneath that counts. It's underwear for a man with a great body. And David Beckham. Is being the best version of yourself beating yourself up all the time to the point where you force yourself into having that six pack, but you're maybe underneath exhausted. It's a balance, isn't it? Yeah, when people are like in the comments, oh, well, why are you talking to boys, talk to real men? I'm like, shut up, man. Easy good music. These kids are really smart and they're honest. And sometimes I'll talk to you, quote unquote, real men. And I'm like, okay, I know that you are thinking a lot about what you're saying. So it's not coming from such a natural place. Some guys, the whole point of me going to speak to young people is it's like, this is where it starts. Why do you want me to always go speak to guys that think they have all the answers? Go speak to the guys who are where the seeds are being planted. It was through that conversation that I was like, oh my gosh, these guys are actually thinking about plastic surgery at their young age. This is as, as early as it comes in. Ronaldo, when he was younger, he had some problem with his teeth and like something to do with it. So, don't come up with me that nonsense. I really, really do appreciate hearing from people, especially people who, um, yeah, who kind of get it. It means a lot, uh, a lot of work goes into these. Um, it's not all just giggles and nails. Um, so yeah, it, it's good when it pays off. Also, like, should we mention, we got nominated for RTS Awards, which is kind of sick. Yeah, like, well. We got nominated for a Royal Television Society Award, which is like, proper telly award um, and we're the only non-broadcast, non-news agency nomination. I think we've got to probably take a little break from putting out videos because um, honestly we haven't finished all of them um, and it's YouTube so we can just take a break um, and we will be back in a couple of weeks uh, with some more fresh episodes. Um, yeah, in exploring lots of interesting things and yeah, so like, comment and subscribe to stay up to date with what we're working on. Yeah, all right, we done? I never want to say it again.